Hi everyone, my name is Manu Tarek and the topic that I will be presenting on today is quantum tunneling. The phenomenon of quantum tunneling is as fascinating as the name suggests. So let's get straight into it. In the simplest terms, quantum tunneling refers to the concept that an electron can pass through a potential barrier without essentially possessing more energy than the barrier itself. This is a very interesting concept that we can also visualize in our mind. Sort of like when in movies they show a superhero that can materialize and reappear on the other side of a wall. Now in terms of classical physics, we can explain this concept using kinetic energy and potential energy. Suppose that a ball is to be rolled over a hill. And in classical physics, the ball must possess energy greater than the potential energy barrier provided by the hill. However, according to quantum physics, the ball could simply tunnel through the hill to the other side without even having to go over it. Very strange to think about normally, but when viewed from the perspective of quantum physics, it becomes much easier to understand. According to quantum physics, the location of an electron cannot be known precisely and its occurrence can only be expressed as a probability wave function. So let us assume that instead of the ball, we have a probability wave and instead of the hill, we had a potential barrier. When this wave hits the barrier, it is reflected back according to the laws of physics. However, that is not entirely what happens. In all of this, a small event called evanescence is taking place. So, what then is evanescence? For that, we will have to go over to the laws of reflection and refraction of light. Light is an electromagnetic wave. When we shine light through glass, at the boundary of this glass, refraction will occur due to a change in medium. But light also gets reflected at the boundary. And at a certain angle, all of this light can be reflected back. And this is known as a total internal reflection. However, that is not entirely what goes on. Some, uh, since light is an electromagnetic wave, we can use Maxwell's equations to solve for total internal reflection. And it is seen that at the boundary, instead of a complete abrupt bouncing back of light, there is a very quick exponential drop off wave called an evanescent wave. This wave lasts for a very few seconds before vanishing. However, if we place another medium really close to the evanescent wave, there is a chance that it will not decay off completely. Instead, it can continue to travel onwards. And as the probability wave hits the barrier, it is reflected back and an evanescent wave is produced at the boundary. Some of the wave can make it through to the other side. This transmitted wave then represents the probability of finding the electron on the other side of the barrier. Now there are several cases of quantum tunneling with the potential barrier being placed in several different instances. However, we will focus on two common examples, that is the square potential barrier and step barriers. In square potential barriers, the system is divided into three regions. Region one at the left of the barrier where X is equals to zero and the potential energy is zero. This is the region where the incident wave and reflected waves pass. In region two, uh, x is equals to L and V is V0, which is the maximum value of potential energy. Here the transmission occurs and in region 3 to the right of the barrier where X is greater than L and V is equals to 0, here the um, transmitted wave appears. If we solve the time independent Schrodinger equation for each region, we get the following solutions. In region one, the first term represents incident wave while the second term represents the reflected wave. For region three, the solution is as followings. Here we do not have a reflected wave since uh, after region three, there is no barrier or boundary for it to reflect off of. 
for region 2 since uh, the potential energy is at its maximum the solution of the schrodinger equator is seen to be as follows now if the function is continuous then at x is equals to 0 we can consider that the wave function in region 1 is equal to region 2 similarly if uh, we can do the same for region t 2 and region 3 as is shown in these equations we have equated both sides of the regions and we have these two equations now in the same way uh, derivatives at the boundaries will also be continuous if the functions are continuous and thus we get these four equations now by substituting in the values of x is equals to 0 and x is equals to l we can use these equations to determine the reflection and transmission coefficients here we can see the um, expression for transmission coefficient and after very lengthy derivation and solving of equations we see that the expression reduces down to this it is also to be noted that the reflection coefficient and the transmission coefficient add up to be 1. Uh, now the second case is step barriers with two subdivisions that are usually in step barriers where one uh, and one case is where the energy of the wave function is greater than at the potential barrier while the other case is where the energy is less than the barriers potential in both of these cases the energy in region 1 is 0 when x is equals to 0 and the solution of the Schrodinger equation is as follows for region 2 the solution of the equation becomes this and our solution to that equation is simply c multiplied by e raised to power i x i k x uh, now without going into too much detail and applying the same method for the square barrier potential we can see that the reflection and transmission coefficients of step barriers are as follows now i wanted to focus more on the applications and examples of quantum tunneling are more important in my opinion because we have already studied the uh, mathematics behind potential barriers so um, for a more in-depth understanding of this phenomenon i will look at three examples of quantum tunneling that are seen in our daily life and these are one is flash memory the other is scanning tunneling microscope and the third one is alpha decay now uh, flash memory which we commonly see being used in usps uses quantum tunneling to store data Flash memory is also known as non-volatile memory, which means that it will stay effective even without having a power source. Now to store information, storage devices use MOSFET, which uh, the abbreviation, it is an abbreviation for metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor. Uh, now, uh, this MOSFET consists of a control gate and a channel whereby the control gate determines the flow of charges into and out of the device and it sets it into the 1 or 0 state in binary language. Now, when voltage is applied uh, to this um, gate, uh, charges can gather on the surface and the effects of this can change the conductivity of the material it can result in high conductivity which means the opening of the gate or high resistance which means the closing of a gate however without any barrier between the channel and the gate the charges would keep flowing unable to store information therefore an um, 
insulating layer mostly silicon dioxide is placed between the channels and the gate and between uh, this insulating layer there is a layer of metal which is placed usually silicon and uh, all of this the insulating layer and the layer of metal create a floating gate transistor uh, now accumulation of charges on this layer is essentially the storing of information uh, now you're probably wondering where quantum tunneling comes into all of this well if the insulating layer is thin enough the charges can travel through it to reach to the metal silicon which is inside the floating gate transistor once the charges accumulate inside uh, the metal the memory device can now keep this information stored for a long time and uh, in the same way that the floating gate transistor is charged it can be discharged as well using quantum tunneling uh, the um, visualization of this concept can be done through the picture shown on the slide and we can see the floating gate transistor in this picture and the accumulation of charges or the trapped electrons inside the insulated, insulated floating gate. Then we have the scanning tunneling microscope. A uh, scanning tunneling microscope is something that we've heard of a lot, but most of us didn't know that quantum tunneling is what actually makes it work. Uh, now, this scanning tunneling microscope is used to map out the surface of a material depending on its electron density. The microscope consists of a probe and a tungsten tip which is very sharp and pointed. The tip is brought very near to the surface, a few angstroms apart and voltage is applied to the probe. The electrons can now transmit through the tiny space that exists between the tip and the surface. And this transmission creates a flow of charges, essentially creating a current which determines the electron density on the surface. Uh, greater the current that is produced, greater the electrons on that part of the surface. This, uh, by this method, the entire surface of uh, the substance is mapped out over a screen and we can see in this example this is what an image produced by a scanning tunneling microscope looks like and uh, as we have seen that quantum tunneling plays a huge role in this uh, entire process. Uh, last lastly, we have the alpha decay and although we've read about it since school, we never really knew that alpha particle emission also takes place through quantum tunneling that is very interesting and it was interesting for me to learn about it. It is or it was normally assumed that the daughter nucleus and the alpha particle simply sit inside uh, a parent nucleus waiting for it to be split apart. However, that is not true. Uh, we know that uh, decay takes over uh, takes place over uh, diff varying time periods depending on the element in question and we also know that a nucleus is held together by strong and weak nuclear forces which are keeping the particles bound to the nucleus so an alpha particle cannot simply just escape or detach from these forces instead the particle needs to uh, treat this energy like a potential barrier much like we have seen in quantum tunneling uh, and when it treats it like that, it can emerge successfully on the other side of the barrier or the forces. As we can see in this graph, the forces are creating a barrier, a potential barrier and keeping the alpha particle trapped inside. Uh, the kinetic energy of the alpha particle is not enough to overcome the barrier classically. However, with the help of quantum tunneling, it can transmit uh, through and emerge successfully on the other side of the nucleus. And once the alpha particle quantum tunnels, then only the Coulomb repulsion is needed to actually escape from the atom and be split 
split into the daughter nucleus and the alpha particle that we see uh, happening in the process of alpha decay. Uh, that has been very interesting for me to learn and I'm hoping that it's equally interesting for you to learn as well. Now that is it from my side. Thank you very much.